This is a better technology for money. Digital gold. Biggest and the most impressive social elevator. The gold standard for security and decentralization. It's non-political. It's the only non-political money we have. It's all about ownership. That means there is no counterfeit. There is no double spending. It's impossible to hack it or get control on it. So it symbolizes the freedom, the new technology. It's a digital revolution. We cannot change it. What is Bitcoin? Digital currency? A new financial system? Or just a bubble? For many of those people, it is a life-changing invention. Bitcoin has started a chain reaction that will forever change our view of economics, finance, and the world itself. But what is the idea behind this technology? Can it really be trusted? And if yes, why are so many fighting to stop it? It all started in 2008. The world was in the grip of the global financial crisis. The stock markets tumbled, banks collapsed, the economies of entire countries crashed. Families all around the world were left without homes and livelihoods. It wasn't the first such crisis. And as we all know, it wouldn't be the last. But when it comes to trust in the global financial system, the 2008 recession became the last straw. That's when the Bitcoin code was published with its creator, Satoshi Nakamoto, whose identity still remains a mystery, saying he had found the solution to this vicious cycle, a system that no longer requires trust in governments, banks, and national currencies. And the idea has resonated with many. And I discovered Bitcoin through a philosophical reasoning. You know, I was a very big proponent trying to figure out a way out of the debt-based economy system that's plaguing our economy today in the world. And uh, I was looking for something like Bitcoin for the longest time. We joked, we came together, we said, this Bitcoin idea, it's a pretty good idea. And we started buying it, we started trading it, we started building businesses. I put my whole life in the industry in 2013. It's like a hedge against, the, hedge against the monetary system and everyone who knows about the monetary system knows that eventually it has to fail. Money is printed and um, like we are losing our purchasing power. That It's like a whole system to redistribute wealth from the poor to the middle class to the rich. Currently, your money is not your money. The digits in your bank account do not mean that you truly own that currency. Efficiency, security. Look at all the banks have been hacked. You see hotel, this hack, this hack. This hack, double spending. Those create inflation. Inflation uh, is one of the sen uh, center topic and, and it is crazy right now. Most people don't understand inflation. 30 something percent of the US dollars printed last uh, in, during COVID. I don't understand why people don't understand this. Uh, when you print 30% more money, then and if we don't get it, then we become 30% poor. The effects are not immediate uh, because we look at our bank balance, it still stays the same number, but the price, uh, inflation is going to kick in and the price is going to go up and our purchasing power will decrease by that amount at least. Cryptocurrency is honest money, something that was lacking in the world before. It's because of this that few governments and banks are ready to let it in. Inflation, hyperinflation, wars, these systems need to be secure from that, you know, and this is why we view Bitcoin as the gold standard for security and decentralization. There's no central institution, no government, no bank who can just decide, no central bank who can just decide we're just going to print more Bitcoin, right? If you buy Bitcoin, you know, forever, there's not going to be more than 21 million Bitcoin. It's a piggy bank, which you can pass it on to your kids for generations. Bitcoin is the only non-political money in the world. For example, your bank money can get frozen, your, your gold can get uh, confiscated, but with Bitcoin you can literally cross the border with millions of dollars stuck in your brain. Uh, it's revolutionary and uh, Bitcoin has no political attachments. It's on the blockchain, it's open for anyone to use, it's not uh, possible to censor. So I think that the more uncertainty we see around the world, the more people will wake up to the power of Bitcoin because they will see how the current financial system is breaking right in front of their eyes. But how is Bitcoin different from traditional financial instruments? In his Bitcoin white paper, Satoshi Nakamoto explains his goal was to create an electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof instead of trust. Every bank, 
every company, enterprise, every regulatory body has a decision-making center. But the main idea of the blockchain, the core technology behind Bitcoin, is decentralization. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network where you don't need a bank or any third party. There's nobody to control, coerce, or corrupt it. The majority of the regulatory uh, uh, financial institution is based in the United States. Probably this is not like a, a big problem for people in the United States, but for the uh, rest of the world, um, it's very hard for people to get access to uh, financial institutions like banks, uh, insurance, funds, and the most of the um, uh, financial institutions don't want to serve developing countries and poor uh, people. Um, but I believe blockchain is a solution. I think banking system digging themselves out right now. It is rather difficult to open bank account if you get, have got some, I don't know, not useful passport. Cryptocurrency is one of the way how the banking system can change. They're unbanked in certain countries, they can't get access to banks, then this is a great um, fundamental way for people to have access to currency and, uh, and payments so they're able to, to live their daily lives without needing to have like proof of address or anything like this. So they can buy things and, and uh, earn money from their business just using Bitcoin and crypto as well. So the power of, of Bitcoin is completely exponential. You control your money and uh, when you control your money, you, you will be able to control your mind and uh, you're able to, to, to control what you want and uh, what you can do. Ultimately, in the decentralized blockchain system, no one has to trust anyone else. How does it work? Every transaction is a block that's recorded across a network of computers and added to the chain. Each member has a copy of the chain. This allows everyone to verify not just a single transaction, but to trace the whole history of Bitcoin down to the very first one, made by Satoshi Nakamoto himself. It is fundamentally a better technology. So what internet did for information sharing, blockchain is going to do that for money. And I think the impact for this new technology change is going to be bigger than the internet. I think Bitcoin definitely started the revolution. They have created a sturdy, very secure system, which is not, not, the, not true for most of the currencies uh, globally. In blockchain, you can follow every transaction. You can find out how clean the pool is. It's hard money, it's secure money, it's non-confiscatable, it's uh, divisible, it's transportable, um, it's censorship resistant. You can make a transaction, never can ever take, never anyone can take it back. Um, it's basically giving you the power back, right? Your financial freedom, you can keep it in your hand and no one can take it away. It's very different with fiat, even with cash in your hand, right? Uh, with money on your bank account. You lose power, you give it away. It's not your money, it's based on debt. The re reason of blockchain is no one is immutable. It's immutable. It's irrefutable. If I send you Bitcoin, no one can take it. That's power. No one can erase the ledger. That's power. Your money should work for you and not against you. I am like truly in control of my own money. And, and that's something that in this day and age that uh, you can't necessarily say uh, with certain banks and certain rules and regulations. That Bitcoin and crypto really gives you the power of your own money, which I love. You have these hacks happening, you have state-driven attacks, you have governments trying to break these things, and when people want to use systems like that, or store money, or store value in systems like that, they start to cherish the aspect that it cannot be shut down. Um, you know, it starts with people not caring, to people caring but not realizing what's happening, to people realizing what's happening and cherishing that aspect of that system. So because they do cherish it, now we're seeing more and more awareness of the fact that there's a system that can secure money, value, information, yet it cannot be attacked by a single entity, and it grows above and beyond. We can build a financial infrastructure, um, easy to get access, uh, just like air, like food, uh, uh, will become like a basic need for a uh, human being and everybody can get access to it uh, with almost zero cost. I'm really grateful to Bitcoin for how it's changing the world and for the new perspectives that it's bringing in for all of humanity. We can say that Bitcoin will save you from inflation, but we need to count on like three, five, seven plus years anyway. If you will try to invest now and if you will check maybe in one month, 
you could be in losses in 10-15% anyway. But in long term, Bitcoin is limited supply, it's 21 million. And it's in, uh, decreasing now, it's really decreasing. 21st million will be mined in like 200 years, which is really supply and demand now. And Bitcoin will be valuable anyway. When you first get into the crypto market, Bitcoin is what you learn about. And it's only after that, after you've installed a wallet and understood how to buy Bitcoin, that you uncover all of the other many opportunities of this market. You know as a Bitcoin user that no matter who you are, where you're from, that system is going to treat you equally. You have equal access to me. Fast forward to 2022. Bitcoin has started a so-called crypto revolution. Over 300 million users are using more than 19,000 cryptocurrencies worldwide. Thousands of businesses are making crypto transactions. Yet, many people are still very suspicious and uneasy about the crypto industry. I understand how it is. First it was crypto, and then you think, wow, blockchain, then NFT, now metaverse. It's all coming so fast. I'm still starting to understand what is Bitcoin, and now there is NFT. Some say, no, no, please don't. Don't tell us about mining. We're generally interested, but we don't want anything to do with it. So if we collaborate, please remove mining from your projects. There are people like this who fear, who don't understand. Now, some of them are just being like Bitcoin. Mining, cryptocurrencies, no, 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 never. It's going to collapse, it's never going to work. Technology in this industry is not easy enough for the average people to use very securely. So there's a, learning, there's a very steep learning curve on how to use this technology properly. So we want to share all of our best practices. So first of all, from Binance Academy, now we have about 500 plus different uh, topics that we educate people on, it's completely free, and it's translated into 31 languages. I suppose that the mass adoption of blockchain as a technology to replace banks is being limited by its own complexity. It's pretty hard for regular folk to get into all the details with the technology at its current level of development. So what matters now is simplicity. That's the primary goal that we want to achieve in order to provide an easy blockchain pass for a billion users. And I must say that dozens of projects including ours, are working on it, working on simplification of the ordinary user's experience. Crypto enthusiasts are eager to see mass adoption. However, one of the main obstacles in the way of their dream coming true are governments. The decentralized nature of blockchain isn't winning many fans among the world's powers that be. Bitcoin is challenging their authority to regulate and control financial flows. They view it as an instrument for illicit activity, exploited by criminals. Major economies are pushing back against blockchain, from crypto exchange restrictions in the US to a total ban on transactions and mining in China. The problem is, because of incidental empires, the government central system feel like they have no control. Regulation is good if it's for tax purposes only, but not to centralization is we want freedom. People want to be able to have freedom of cryptocurrency, like what I'm power. We're not saying government cannot regulate. If you make money in cryptocurrency, pay your capital gain. It helps revenue generations. But don't take the freedom from the people. But so far, I don't think any countries ban Bitcoin or crypto. Like uh, some countries ban crypto exchanges, some countries ban ICOs, some countries have banned uh, crypto derivatives. Um, some countries have even banned like you know uh, uh, banks from working with crypto exchanges. But holding Bitcoin is, pro is, as far as I know, is legal in every single country in the world. Technology is evolving at a much faster pace than um, what regulators are, uh, are doing. So I think the technology will always be a little bit ahead of what the, what the regulations are. I think those frameworks are still evolving. It will take a lot of time for, for global uh, kind of regulatory bodies to come together and create a global framework. Because this, is, this technology is global. You can't, you can't stop it. You can't ban these technol this technology. Uh, well, regulatory bodies need to understand the growth curve that's happening. They need to get involved instead of try to stifle innovation and try to stifle. Uh, but at the same time, we have proposals to be able to uh, allow for opt-in compliance. 
There are different levels of understanding uh, of this industry by regulators in different parts of the world, or even in same parts of the world, different people just underst uh, understand it differently. Uh, we have guys who still, we, we, I meet people who still, they just have that man mindset, which shows a lack of understanding of crypto. Um, then we have other guys who are like, we have other regulators who are totally into metaverses. And those guys who understand this industry well, typically are very pro crypto. Um, they are really fighting with their colleagues to say, how do we adopt this better? Just a few years ago, few people could talk seriously about purchasing something with Bitcoin. But now, there are entire nations that have adopted Bitcoin as legal tender. The case in question is that of El Salvador. In 2021, the Central American country sent shockwaves across the world when it adopted Bitcoin as legal tender. Salvador go uh, further that they Im just not doing mining. They implemented uh, Bitcoin as a kind of their national currency. So they showing it's uh, like it is possible to use uh, Bitcoin as a kind of payment in any country. El Salvador, after they legitimize uh, Bitcoin, uh, they have attract like so many entrepreneurs and the whole industry into El Salvador. I'm a crypto diehard fan, so I really, I really like the fact that you know they, uh, we have a young, we have a president that's strong enough to push this initiative forward. Sooner or later, people will see the advantage of that that creates. Their citizens who are holding Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies will be more or less uh, inflation proof, uh, so they will be insulated from the global inflations that will that will come. Uh, that will, that's almost guaranteed to come in the next few years. The legal adoption of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies will inarguably have a positive effect on both developing and developed countries. I think in the next two, three years, we will see more and more states uh, provide like uh, a very clean uh, framework to legalize Bitcoin. Uh, we see, um, you know, regulators in uh, UAE, in other countries, uh, they're wanting to attract this, in, uh, this industry. They understand this is the future of, um, of uh, this is the future of economy. El Salvador has set a precedent that inspired many across the world. Crypto enthusiasts believe this is just the beginning of the blockchain era which will see people from different countries and backgrounds uniting around the idea of the new digital financial freedom. After all, the main value of Bitcoin and any other crypto project is the power of the community. See, the good thing about the crypto market, the thing that you understand when you get in, is that it's not about Bitcoin or Ethereum or other tokens. It's about people, the power of the community. All brands, all IPs, all celebrities, they are looking for ways to be more connected to their fans, to their loyal users, how they can uh, give them value, be closer, interact with them, in, not necessarily in like a commercial and transactional way, but more in a way that gets fans more value, more time, more content for the reason they love those brands and have true authentic interaction. What is today is the most valuable thing in uh, crypto market is when you have big community, real community, which is supporting your idea. So it is creating big uh, market cap and uh, real transactions. All blockchain projects, if you will join uh, Solana, Avalanche, uh, Nier, Everscale, and etc., uh, have now 20, maybe 30 million users. It's nothing. It's nothing, because we have 7 billion potential users. 7.5 billion people in the world. Only 5% interact with blockchain. That means the space is new. Anyone can dominate that space. And I say, why not us? In its 13-year history, Bitcoin has hit a number of bumps in the road. Attempts to alter the protocol, fights with governments, collapsing stocks. Critics predict the so-called crypto bubble will burst every month. Nevertheless, the dazzling history of Bitcoin's ups and downs shows that it has won its place in the world and is not going anywhere. Lots of the people has underestimated uh, uh, how much we can achieve uh, in a long time. I think in the last five years, we grow from uh, almost from zero to uh, two trillion dollars today. When Uber came out, people thought it was not going to survive. When Airbnb came out, 
It just shows that we are moving from centralization to decentralization, whether it's in finance, whether it's in entertainment, whether it's in the media. So money was the last thing to be digitized. We're definitely seeing the broader adoption of what those digital assets and currencies represent. We will see more tokenization of real things. Uh, I like the tokenization of real estate, just really nice things. So for example, real tea, they're doing this in the US. I missed it in Dubai, I missed it also in Europe. Right now we have we see bank like JP Morgan experimenting already with Ethereum forks. And just the future, more efficient financial system. Crypto banks are already like a common thing. Like we're not the only ones, but we're one of the pioneers. But now many other banks they they have the similar similar approach. It, it's 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 happening. It's already happening, and there, I don't think there is anything to stop crypto in this world anymore. This is here to stay and to be probably one of the main tools in our life. Layer one blockchains will essentially become like the new republics. These will be the new mechanisms where all the value is going to proliferate to. Just like Visa, MasterCard, but much more secure, without middlemen, take away the fees, uh, offers economies of scale, so the more people use it, the cheaper it gets. I think that the convenience of digital assets is already clear for all to see. New things like stable coins are really easy to use in business, and my guess is that 90% of all fiat will move to that sphere within the next few years. For the next five years, uh, I believe crypto will become uh, uh, Facebook, uh, become Instagram. Everybody will use it like every day. I already see uh, this trend uh, for younger generations. Uh, some of them uh, know crypto uh, uh, before they uh, get their first credit card. This is the fastest growing and most promising market at this moment in history. This is going to be the biggest growth uh, sector for, um, for, for what I can see in my life. So I think basically this, this, this industry has the most impact for the next couple of decades on human society. I think the world will be changing and cryptocurrencies will be like backend technology in all payment system. I believe the future is crypto and perhaps in 10 years we could have a unified currency that we can all use around the world and perhaps the government's role could be perhaps less important for money in the future. I hope that uh, cryptocurrencies will crash the borders, borders between the countries, borders in payments and also borders in their minds. It's not fair that if you're born in a particular place, for no fault of your own, your character, your merit, how hard you work, you either gain an advantage or a disadvantage. That's not fair. We're past that as a society. We're past that as humans. My hope is over the next 10 years, we make significant progress towards liberating and freedom. And it's up to all of us. It's not one leader or person. Every single person has a say now and a, and a voice now. And we're all fighting the same fight together.